CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. No denying it. There's a great fascination in one man's ability to outwit another by the mere application of wits. We admire a man who is light-fingered rather than heavy-handed. Such a man is, of course, Bradley Layton. Names familiar? It ought to be. There isn't a police force anywhere in the world which hasn't his name on their most wanted list. Inspector Conway, let me report I've met up with Bradley Layton, our master thief. We're going dancing tonight. Ah, a splendid idea. Oh, I thought it might be useful to get him out of the way. All I shall need is two hours to search his stateroom for the necklace. Congratulations, Miss Lake. You're doing a fine job. Inspector, this is the most pleasurable assignment I've ever had in the cause of law and order. mystery drama, The Masterminds, based on a story by Jacques Futrell, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by G. Frederick Lewis, and stars Russell Horton. When you're at the top of your profession, the word master is added to your trade such as Master Builder, Master Carpenter, Master Mariner. It's a long list. So it is even in that dubious profession of thievery. The title Master Thief was bestowed on Bradley Layton by newspapers, Scotland Yard, the Surete, and the police departments of Chicago, New York, and Boston, somewhat in anger, but mostly in admiration. Inspector, I know you in Scotland Yard have a 24-hour day, so I appreciate you seeing me so late in the evening. Uh, at least I can begin to learn here. Well, you will forgive me for saying so, Miss Lake. Oh, but... please, please, call me Diana. Uh, Diana. But why your Boston police should send a female operative across the Atlantic to study our methods is beyond me. Well, you have no female operatives here at the Yard? Well, not in any position of authority. Well, there are some highly trained women chemists in our laboratory, but in the field, <laughs> no. Okay, Inspector Conway, we in America have found very often a female detective can succeed where a male would be stymied. Uh, stymied? Well, at any rate, I'm here to observe and to learn and not to get in your way. You still haven't caught up with Bradley Layton, hmm? Yeah, that's a very sore point with us. We'd like to see him caught, too. That's quite a record of hauls he's had. The Hemingway jewels, the Chelton and bracelet. Mm. How did he manage to get away with that, by the way? The word we got back at home in Boston was the London police knew about it in advance. Miss Cheltenham had invited him to her coming out party. Now, first of all, she shouldn't have been wearing anything so valuable. All we know is that Leighton strolled out on the lawn with Miss Cheltenham sometime that evening during the party. She dropped the bracelet, and that was it. It was never found. Well, there's no question he lifted it. And then broke it up, sold it diamond by diamond. Uh, don't forget the very large emerald. Mm, Leighton may have even found a buyer in America. And then what? Then he disappeared. Who knows when he'll show up next? He's a rascal. We seek him here, we seek him there. We seek him nearly everywhere. <laughs> is he in heaven or is he in hell? That damned elusive pimpernel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. Hello? Ah, oh, here we are. Hello? Uh, hello? Miss Lake, I don't know if you have the same trouble with these contraptions. <laughs> They've just installed these American inventions of yours all over London and the yard. Hello. Ah, yeah, yes, Hartley. Yes, I hear you. Yes, I hear you. Oh, he is? You sure? Well, do about it. What can I... All right. I shall be in my office the rest of the evening if anything breaks. Well... If you want to be on hand when Leighton's in action, young lady, you just may be. He's here? 
In London? Lady Stanley is giving a fancy ball for the ambassador. Small affair, 300 guests. And have a guest, Diana, who is also invited. Bradley Layton. Himself. Isn't it possible to have the place guarded? I'm afraid our police are as recognizable as yours. Over here, nobody likes to give a party and see plain clothesmen standing about. But how did Leighton get invited? Oh, he always is. If you didn't know how he made his he living, you'd bring him the most sure, charming of eligible men. I'd like to meet him. Well, I'd like to catch him. You know, it seems crazy. There he is at that ball, putting the finger on someone's jewels... And there's nothing you can do about it. Well, it's probably too late right this minute. The affair started about an hour ago, and Bradley Layton doesn't wait long before he strikes. Lady Stanley, I always enjoy dancing with you. Oh, where have you been keeping yourself, Bradley, dear? It seems the only way to find you is to invite you to a party. Mm. Actually, I can't even remember where I've been. I know I spent a couple of weeks this summer at Cetro. I did, did, did a bit of skiing at some of Oh, you bachelors really have the best of all possible lives. <laughs> You're better off, I suppose, without a wife to take care of. At least you don't have to be constantly giving out pretty gifts. I do sometimes. And receive them, too, I notice. I, I do believe that's an immense in your wearing. Oh, from an admirer? For my part, ladies, then they let me be the admirer of your necklace. Mm. <laughs> but then, you know, I have always admired it. Clusters of the blue, white, and the rubies. They aren't generally so well known. Well, it's really all I have to remember, Lord Stanley, but... Oh, 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 oh. No. Oh, 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 are you all right, Lady Stanley? Oh, dear, dear, no, wasn't that a stupid thing to do? Oh, my, to, to fall on the dance floor at your feet, Bradley. It, it, it felt like somebody tripped me. Oh, let me help you up, Lady Stanley. Oh, Hold on to me. There. Oh, there we are. No, I'm not hurt. No, 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 not in the slightest. Oh, my. Wasn't that stupid of me? You're sure you're all right? No, no, no. Don't you dare treat me like an old lady. No, no. Well, what were we talking about? Oh, yes, 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 yes. My necklace. Lady Stanley, I... I think you must have dropped it. It's not around your throat. It's not. It's not. Oh, dear. Shall we look oh. back there where you fell? Oh, yes, yes, we, we must. I, I, I didn't even feel it come off. Now, let me clear the space where we were. Yes. I'll have the orchestra start playing till we find it. It must be here somewhere. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you would be so good. Uh, Mr. Orchestra Leader, would you please stop playing? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Lady Stanley has dropped a necklace somewhere on the ballroom floor. Now, if everyone would please stand perfectly still where you are and look down at your feet, we ought to be able to find it. Bradley, dear boy, I, I feel quite faint. Well, that's why I led you to this sitting room, Lady Stanley. So that the ball could continue and you could get a chance to recover. I cannot understand where the necklace disappeared to. I am distressed. Do you think it's possible to have all of your guests searched? Searched? At a ball in honor of the ambassador? But how could we? What would people say? Then you don't think any of your guests here tonight might have made off with the necklace? My guests? <laughs> Of course we can't have anyone searched. I, I'd be the laughing stock of London. I was only trying to help. Well, I, I know you were, dear boy. Oh, my, I feel better now. Perhaps we should inform the police. The police? And insult 300 of my dearest friends? Well, there's time enough for that tomorrow. Now, take my hand and you and I shall return to the ballroom. You really feel up to dancing, Lady Stanley? I have to make an appearance. It's expected of me. What? What? Yes. 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 Yes, Hartley. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, 
Well, what did I tell you, Miss Lake? Uh, Diana, I knew it would happen. Lady Stanley's necklace was stolen last night at her ball. Ah, serves her right. Wouldn't inform anyone or ask the yard for protection. Half a million pounds gone. Vanished. Bradley Lake. Well, oh, who else? Exactly like the Cheltenham case. The only difference, instead of strolling in the dark with one victim, he's dancing with another. Presto, the valuables are gone. Mm, what we in Boston call his M.O., modus operandi, method of operation. Oh, yes. D- does he always work alone? Well, generally, sometimes with a male accomplice, sometimes a female. But not often. And never the same confederate twice. Of course, we haven't actual proof. Did anyone see him remove the necklace from Lady Stanley's neck? It could only have been Bradley Layton. My assistant just told me that the servants have all been questioned, the butlers, the caterers, mm. musicians, every flunky in the place. But you haven't questioned Leighton himself. Uh, the damned, elusive Pimpernel is not in London. But we'll do the next best thing. Search his apartment here. Uh, yes? What? Well, say that again, Hartley. Hold on. Diana Bradley Leighton is booked to sail for America on the HMS Romantic. Hmm. Uh, uh, Hartley, when? Day after tomorrow. Ah, yes, good news. Now I think we've got him. And then I'll talk to you later. Diana, I have always said that sooner or later a criminal overplays his hand. <laughs> Bradley Leighton, the day after tomorrow... He's sailing for Boston. Uh, your hometown, no less. That's good news. Rack your brains, dear girl. Why should a man be sailing to America in midwinter? He's got the necklace, and he's taking it to America to get rid of it. Yes, good thinking. And once our master-minded jewel thief is on that boat, uh, we've got him. There's nowhere he can hide the necklace. Diana... How would you like to be in on the kill? Come with me aboard. We'll have ten days to stalk our prey. I'd be thrilled, Inspector. Now, I don't think Leighton knows me by sight, and he certainly doesn't know you. Oh, I'll be glad to introduce myself to him. Yeah. He'd never get away with this one, even if we do happen to fail, and I doubt that. In Boston, the American customs officials will find the jewels. KOH in Reno. That fog room? Mm-hmm. Sounds like foggy weather. And you know what happened to the Titanic. Mm. The Titanic was ten years ago in 1912. And it wasn't fog they ran into. It was an iceberg. And there are no icebergs on this route? Mm, not a one. Didn't that chap from Scotland Yard I've seen you talking to tell you about ocean voyages by steamship? Mr. Culpepper is from Scotland Yard? <gasps> are you sure? Am I sure? thinks he's traveling incognito. That gentleman's name is not Culpepper. It's Conway. Herbert Conway, chief inspector of the yard. You know him? I'd say over the years I've made a practice of trying to avoid him. Now, if you'll excuse me, Miss, um... Diana Lake. Miss Lake, I must be off for my morning walk around the deck. I shall look for you after dinner. Perhaps you'll join me in a dance this evening as well. I love to dance. And the funny part of our conversation Did you happen to overhear Inspector Conway? He never told me what his name was Mm, He will, he will You were right though You mean about the necklace? Did he let on? No (laughs) About how handsome and charming he is We're going dancing tonight You are? Well, fantastic progress. Boston certainly has a very smooth operative in you, Diana. I thought it might be useful. Uh, While you're keeping him on the dance floor, I shall have myself a good old examination of his cabin. How much time do you need? Two hours should do it easily. I have an old hand at this, and in that time I'd be very surprised if I can't come up with Lady Stanley's necklace. Inspector Conway, I would say this 
is going to be the most pleasurable assignment I've ever had in the cause of law and order. The date of our tale is obviously 1922, when travelers crossed the Atlantic aboard a great ocean liner in an unhurried, leisurely fashion. Today, that has changed. I'm not sure for the better. What has not changed is that perpetual chase after the wrongdoers by the rightdoers. I shall be back shortly with Act Two of The Master Minds. For the life of me, I have never been able to understand why people make heroes out of master criminals. Is it because they're doing what we don't dare do? Is it because all of us are basically perverse? Or is it because anyone who tries single-handedly to beat the system has our secret admiration? Perhaps before the final curtain rings down, we shall find out. Beautiful out here on deck, isn't it? I say, aren't you Layton? Bradley Layton? Inspector Conway. I wondered when you'd be around to introduce yourself. I don't mind having to travel on the same boat as you. But why are you upsetting my approach to this lovely American girl? If I wish to tell her my name's Culpepper, why do you have to stick your nose in? Mm. When you Scotland Yard boys get on an ocean liner, you behave like the rest of us. Why are you on the HMS Romanic? Well, I've been working pretty hard on the Stanley affair. The old man thought I was due for a vacation. See America, you know? Yeah, that thing at Lady Stanley. I was there, you know. I happened to be the one who noticed her necklace was gone. Who were you? Oh, yes, 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 so you were. Anyway, I just thought I'd let you know I've staked a small claim on Miss Diana. So ease off, Leighton, would you please? Mr. Culpepper. After tonight, I'll do that. Besides, I understand there are a few bridge players on board, so starting tomorrow night, I plan to join them in the smoking room. So, you can have the little American lady all to yourself. Yes, who is it? Conway here. Oh, Inspector, come in. Well, success? You were going to give me two hours. I heard the two of you singing at the top mm-hmm. of your voices coming down the companionway after only one hour. Well, it was the only way I had to put you wise. Then I just managed to unlock the adjoining cabin door and hide there till the coast was clear. Oh, I was just as upset as you were. The orchestra suddenly got a little under the weather and stopped playing. So you didn't find Lady Stanley's necklace, hmm? No. Now we'll have another try tomorrow night. Bradley didn't ask me to dance with him tomorrow night. He told me he was joining some men playing bridge in the smoking room. Those games go on until two in the morning, at least. Uh, That'll be our chance. You want me there? You came to learn the yard's techniques. What better way? If he's got Lady Stanley's necklace with him, I'll certainly help you all I can to get them back. Oh, this is what his cabin looks like. It's a lot grander than mine. Well, he spends other people's money in great style. Well, where do we begin, Inspector? <laughs> I'll admit I'm a bit nervous. Well, first of all, Diana, should something go wrong and Leighton happens to return unexpectedly from his bridge game before we're through, I'll let you into the cabin next door. Well, supposing someone's there. Well, just apologize, say you must have gotten into the wrong cabin by mistake and buzz off out through the front door. Don't give them time to think. What about you? Leighton knows who I am. He won't be the slightest surprise to find me here searching his cabin. But I want to keep you out of this. Let him go on believing you're just another American girl on a transatlantic voyage. You understand? Right you are. Now, first thing now... Let's take the bed apart. Get the blankets and sheets Mm -hmm. off. I've got them. Uh, Now, let's see. I'll go over the mattress carefully and see if he's cut apart any of the stitching. Uh, Just enough to hide the necklace. Fine. I'll check the pillows, blankets, and so on. Oh, no luck there. Mm. 
I sure could learn how to make hospital bed corners from you, Inspector. What next? Well, pull out those three dresser drawers, mm-hmm. check the contents, unroll the socks, mm-hmm. unfold each handkerchief, and don't forget to look between the back of each drawer and the cabinet. No sooner said than done. Uh, while you're doing that, I'll untie the bundle of English newspapers. Open each one and shake out each page. Someone smarter than we are. Maybe, maybe not. Persistence is what pays. Haven't we searched everywhere? Not quite. I want you to go right around this carpet. Mm-hmm. Along the door, on the walls, under the bed, wherever. Pull it up wherever mm-hmm. it's not nailed down. I'm going around the room, standing on a chair. Look for any cracks or spaces near the ceiling where the necklace could have been hidden. Uh, and if that turns up, nothing. We'll return to my cabin and plan further. Your cabin has a porthole, Inspector Conway. Mine hasn't. Uh, seniority. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we haven't found anything yet. I say yet, and yet is what I mean. In my opinion, there are three further possibilities. One, Leighton could have left the necklace in the ship's safe to retrieve when we land. Oh, I doubt that. Especially now, knowing you're on board and knowing that when we land, you'd be watching him like a hawk. Check. Well, possibility number two. The necklace is in one of his trunks, which are right now somewhere in the hold. And we would never get to them until the ship docks. Oh, it doesn't sound like the kind of hiding place he'd use. He'd know you'd alert the U.S. Customs. Hmm. Well, what does that leave us? Possibility three. The necklace has got to be on his person. Oh, pretty nervy. That's what he is. I think I shall take me a stroll into the smoking room and examine Bradley Layton myself from toe to head. What are you going to do? Undress him? Uh, My approach will be that of a vacationing member of Scotland Yard who is unsuccessful in containing his liquor. Hello, Inspector. Seas are awfully rough today. Mm. How is the gentleman from Scotland Yard this morning? Still feeling no pain after last night? I'm afraid I... I shouldn't have mixed the grape and the grain. How did you know? Don't you remember? Uh, you, you helped me to my cabin. and I, I seem to remember that. That's all you remember? Is there more? Well, about midnight, Conway, you appeared in the smoking room, a little, shall we say, unsteady on the pin. Um, plastered? To the walls. You came up to where I was playing a hand and put your arms around me. You don't remember any of that? I stood up, excused myself to my bridge partner, but you wouldn't let go of me. So I half carried you to your cabin, old boy. Oh, dear. What can I say? We had the devil's time with you, Conway. You kept hugging me in a most embarrassing fashion. Oh, I am ashamed. What can you think of me? Shall I tell you? If you were pretending in order to frisk me, you're wasting your time. I know nothing about Lady Stanley's stolen necklace other than I happened to be dancing with her the evening it disappeared. Good day, Inspector Conway. Or should I call you Culpepper? For I see that young American lady heading this way. I'd uh, walk that walk with exercise, Inspector. It will help. Good morning, Mr. Culpepper. Ah, good morning, Miss Lake. No luck, I gather. How did you know? No knock on my cabin door last night. Mm, he's as smart as they come. I went through my entire tipsy repertoire to no avail. He didn't have the necklace on him. No, he didn't. There's one more place in his cabin I haven't searched. I'm going back there tonight. Inspector Conway, isn't it getting a little dangerous? In what way? Well, supposing he's armed, a, a gun. Oh, he carries a pistol, I know that. But Leighton never uses a gun when he has the upper hand. Only to defend himself. But if he found you in his cabin... You don't know the man, Diana. Force offends him. He wouldn't stoop to it. I'll be in his cabin at nine tonight. Uh, would you care to join me? I wouldn't miss it. I 
look up there. Mm -hmm. See those ventilation ducts overhead? Mm. Now, I'll stand on the bed and pry loose the front part. It's just the kind of hiding place no one would notice. True. I never think to look there. Now, remember what I said. If Leighton suddenly comes back... Oh, someone is coming. Mm -hmm. Uh, Better put this chair back. I haven't even begun, so we'll both duck into the cabin next door. Good. Cabin's dark. It's empty. Now, let's wait and see if he goes away. Inspector Conway, is that you in the cabin next door? Diana, he's playing games. You better get yourself out the front door of this cabin. Mm -hmm. Hurry. I'll tell you what, Inspector. Come join me for a nightcap. I'll ring for a bottle of brandy and we can sit here and talk. Maybe I can help you find what you're looking for. Hold on, Diana. I'll unlock the front door for you. But what about you? Bradley Leighton always serves extremely rare brandy. It makes our relationship a pleasure. You look depressed this morning, Inspector. Why shouldn't I be? We're nearing land. I'm annoyed and angry, but not defeated. Maybe his sailing to America had nothing to do with the necklace. Isn't that possible? My instinct tells me Lady Stanley's jewels are on this ship. No, he's probably got them in his trunk, or in one of them. Well, then there's no problem. We'll be in Boston Harbor in two hours or so, and I'll go send a radio message to the head of the customs service. My boss, Chief O'Rourke, knows him personally. I'll tell him to go through every piece of luggage Leighton's got until he comes up with a necklace. But I waited for an answer. The chief said they'd take care of the luggage and Leighton as soon as he gets off the ship. Good. But he won't get away with anything. That's him, forward, on the deck below us. Oh. Do you see that? Oh, he's certainly handsome. He's been avoiding me. Don't ask me why. I know I wasn't that bad a dancer, but he never asked me a second time. Diana, look out ahead. There's a motorboat headed this way. Is that the pilot? No, not in that thing. That boat's built for speed. The man at the wheel is waving at us. No, he isn't. He's waving at Leighton. See? Uh, look down there, forward. Leighton's waving back. Oh, hi there! Reggie! Hello, Harry! What brings you here? Are you not you were aboard? Come back to bring you. How is the trick? Boring, I'm afraid. Look, I got a package of American newspapers here. I'll throw them up to you. You might enjoy them. Inspector Conway, something's going on down there. I think we ought to see what it is. Thanks. I've got them. Now, I've got a bundle here of some English papers for you. Catch! There's something in them that will interest you. What do you have? I'll be in back for sure. See you on the dock, baby. Inspector, aren't you going to do something? I do. There goes the necklace. Diana, tell the wireless operator to get you the coast guard. Explain the whole thing. That motor boat's got to be intercepted and searched. And to think I'm standing 25 feet from the whole transaction doing nothing. If I were my chief... I'd fire myself. At this point, it appears that the master criminal mind has outwitted pursuit. As always, I ask myself, what will happen when two antagonists on opposite sides of the law are pitted against one another? And then I realize that is precisely what the third act of Mystery Theater is for. In short order, I shall be bringing that act to you. As author Jacques Futrell describes the scene, Inspector Conway watched the motorboat speeding towards Boston. It spoke to no other craft, passed near none, until it disappeared into Boston Harbor. Shortly thereafter, the HMS Romanic tied up at the dock. Bradley Layton 
was taken to a special room and searched, as was his baggage. There's my chief. Inspector Conway, come with me. Uh, Patrick! Uh, Diana, got your messages. Uh, Inspector Conway, I'd like you to meet my chief, Patrick O'Rourke, Boston Police. Uh, Scotland Yard, eh? I'm very pleased to know you, Chief O'Rourke. I, I don't often get away from my desk, but Diana's been sending wires from about about this Leighton character. Uh, we've heard of him, so I thought I'd give the customs people a hand. Uh, have they examined his luggage? Right down to the toothbrush. Mm. Well, we've had the man strip nothing on him. Had to let him go. The motorboat. The uh, Coast Guard brought her in, held the pilot. A man called Harry Cheshire examined him. We took that little craft apart piece by piece, even raised it out of the water. Nothing. Hmm. Those newspapers? Just English newspapers. Oh, it can't be. It was. I could have sworn. Wait a minute. Patrick, isn't there a few minutes when she's rounding the breakwaters to get into the harbor that she was out of sight? Maybe that's when they transferred the stuff to another boat. Uh, it's true. There are about uh, three minutes when the motorboat was out of sight. But nothing that floats or swims came nearer. I'll tell you what. Let's get your bags together. Yours, Inspector, and Diana, yours. And then both of you come back with me to headquarters. We'll sit down. You give me all the background on this jewel thief. And if I can help, I'll be glad to. So, he's here in America in the clear. And we are, as you say, stymied. Inspector, how many stones in that necklace? Seventy-seven diamonds and fifty rubies. One hundred and twenty-seven. Very good haul. Tell me now, that man in the motorboat, was he really English or, or was he acting? No, there's no question. Actually, he was a Cockney. That's an accent very hard for anyone to imitate. Hmm. English? Cockney? But does it make a difference? Well, only that Leighton might be more likely to have an English accomplice. We'll check into this Harry Cheshire. My feeling, Inspector, is... This Leighton never had the jewels with him, and he's making a fool of you. If it weren't for that bundle of newspapers Leighton threw into that motorboat, I'd say forget it. He didn't bring the stuff with him. So, I must assume he did hide the jewels in his stateroom, and that Harry Cheshire is a confederate and received the stolen goods in the motorboat and made off with them. Well, if so, how were they brought ashore? Harry Cheshire couldn't have swallowed 127 gems, so... I ask you, what have we? Nothing. I don't agree with the inspector. Instead of nothing, we have the answer. I just may be able to give you the name and address of the man who has the jewels at this moment. Assuming, of course, that uh, Leighton brought them with him. Uh, if you'll excuse me, Diana, take care of the inspector. I'm going to the next office and place a call or two. <laughs> Be right back. Uh, <clears throat> Miss Lake, uh, Diana, is your chief joking? No, Inspector. <laughs> but he's quite a wonder. Do you mean to say that I've been working to get hard evidence against Bradley Layton for months in three cases? And all O'Rourke has to do is make a phone call for the name and address of the man who's got the swag. If Patrick O'Rourke told me he was going into the next room to bring back the Pacific Ocean in a teacup, I believe him. I think I got it for you. I wrote down the name, Inspector. Uh, here, uh, now see if you can read my writing. Uh, Henry C.H. Mandeling. Skituate. What's a skituate? It's a town in Massachusetts. Here, I'll show you on the map. Henry Mandeling has probably got the necklace right now, in whole or in part. Diana, it's your assignment. Go on insisting the inspector and uh, find him somewhere to stay, somewhere near skituate. I is that all you're going to tell us, Patrick? Mm -hmm. It's the inspector's case. Well, let's go, then. All the stones will be unset, and you'll probably find them in miniature oilskin bags, about as small as your little finger. We'll follow it up, Chief. And when we apprehend Leighton and Cheshire and Manderling, we'll call you. <laughs> no, 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 don't thank me, Inspector Conway. Hands across the sea. 
I'm sure the yard will do the same for us. Have we much further to walk, Diana? It's getting quite dark. Well, I'm not really sure, Inspector. I- I've never been to Skituit before. But when I asked in that store in the village, they said that Henry Mandelings was the last house along the cliffside. Oh, that's the house. I'm sure of it. Uh. See, it's, it's smaller than all the other mansions that face the ocean, but it's made of stone, and, and that's what they told me. There's a lot of birds about. Hmm. Now, uh, let's follow this gravel path around the back door. Huh. There's no sign of anyone inside. No lamps are lit. Probably no one home. So, let's get in and do the job real fast. Diana! Diana, come here. I'm in the kitchen. Are you all right? Have you found something? Shine your torch onto the table where I have mine. My torch? Oh, yes, my flashlight. No, wait a second. I'll put my gun in my other hand. Well, how do you like that? Where did you find them? Hidden inside the sugar bowl. Oh, little tiny oilskin bags. Just like the chief said. Oh, open one of them, Conway. Uh, let's make certain here. Uh, right, right on the table. Uh, oh. <laughs> Beautiful, aren't they? Oh. Uh, there's no question. Those are the stones from the Stanley necklace. Oh, it didn't take you long to find them, Inspector. Well, I felt so awkward in front of your chief O'Rourke to have come 3,000 miles empty-handed that when he told me where to look, I... I would have felt the greatest fool in the world if I hadn't found them. Shh! Someone's coming. Doubt your light. Yeah. After that little walk along the cliffs area, I think a drink is in order. <laughs> now, where do you keep it? Here, in the kitchen. Will I light the oil lamp? Gentlemen, what, put what your you hands up. Leighton, I want you. You Leighton's do? Leighton's got a gun. Come He's running out the door. I'll get him. You take care of Harry. <laughs> I don't know nothing. Harry, why don't you run out the door like your friend, Leighton? With a bullet in my back? I am not go nowhere. So you're going to let him get away, and you'll be hit with the whole rap. I don't know what you're talking about. We'll see. Okay. Now move. You heard me. Move. Out the front door. Wait a minute. Where do you want me to go? I want you to take me outside and show me that little house you have next to this one. What little house? Where you keep your pigeons, Harry. Come on now. Move. Harming pigeons, Diana. You hit the nail on the head. Patrick, you knew that all along. Conway, <laughs> don't you think Scotland Yard ought to make our Diana an honorary member? I saw those pigeons roosting when Inspector Conway and I went up to search the house. Well, <laughs> I seem to be the only one who didn't notice the difference between pigeons and seagulls. Inspector Conway, you found the jewels... And that's, after all, what you came to America for. Yes, but I lost Bradley Layton. Kelly he disappeared over those cliffs like a ghost. Now, we phoned the Skituit police, asked them to put up a roadblock, but no luck. Well, too late. Ah, don't feel too badly, Conway. Now, we got Harry Cheshire, so even if Layton is loose, he'll never have his accomplice. Who was Henry C. Manderling? Henry C. H. Manderling. Henry C. H. Is he Harry Cheshire? My long shot. You see, it had to be homing pigeons. What else could have scammed out of that boat without being noticed? You know, birds in the water. People would think seagulls like you did. Easy enough to tie the bags of stones to their feet. Up they went, homeward bound. <sighs> that wasn't a long shot. No, no, no. I called the Homing Pigeon Association. What Englishman living around here kept a couple of dozen homing pigeons? And they gave me the name. Uh, how can I thank you, Chief? Are you comfortable, Diana? Very. Are you, Bradley? Very. I like being wrapped up in a blanket lying on a steamer chair. Oh, but I don't like the sound of that, though. No, that's all gone. Mm. I want to get to wherever we're going safely. Mm. 
know what happened to the Titanic. My darling girl, don't you remember my telling you that the Titanic ran into an iceberg, not fall? Hmm. You know, I've been thinking about Inspector Conway, Diana. Inspector Conway? <laughs> I thought he was real sweet. I've been thinking... What are they going to do to him in London when he gets back to Scotland Yard and plunks down what he thinks are Lady Stanley's rubies and diamonds and they all turn out to be imitation? And I've been thinking, what is Chief Patrick O'Rourke going to say when Detective Diana Lake never returns from her vacation? <laughs> Fortunately for law-abiding citizens, a Bradley Layton, a mastermind who can conceive and execute a robbery of such magnitude, doesn't appear on the police blotters every day of the week. However, unfortunately, all the cunning ones have not been caught. But at least we know who they are. I'll be back shortly. of cunning, but we can comfort ourselves that eventually a cunning person overreaches no one but himself. As Ben Johnson put it, cunning derives its effectiveness from the credulity of others. It really requires no extraordinary talents to lie and deceive. Our cast included Russell Horton, Carol Titel, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. This is KOH in Reno.